I greet you from Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Los Gatos, California. As uh, we gather together as God's people, we are connected in the body of Christ and have an opportunity to worship him, gathering around his word, and in so doing, enjoy the presence of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I would like to invite you, if you are able and comfortable, to attend our in-person outdoor worship at Holy Cross. We have two services at 8 and 9.30 a.m. We have communion at every service every Sunday, have some individual uh, communion cups that make it very, very uh, convenient and helpful. Uh, it is a reservation system, so if you'd like to attend, please go to our website, holycrosslosgaddis.com, and make that reservation. In this day, we gather together on the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. We are invited to confess our sins. And as we confess our sins in true repentance and contrition, to receive the full absolution, the forgiveness that Jesus gives to us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have a moment for silent reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, 
Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21, and you're welcome to join in reading. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, we gather around a word of comfort and encouragement that is from God's compassion with the prophet Isaiah in chapter 55. This gathering around the word of Isaiah is one of being refreshing and restoring us. The context for Isaiah's prophecy is God's compassion to the exiles, the Israelites who had been taken into Babylon. God has compassion on them, and he offers them his mercy, freely giving them this hope, although the reason they were in exile was completely their own fault and responsibility because they did not focus on what was truly valuable and important, a true worship of God. So let's take a word, look at the words of Isaiah. Verse 1. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Well, we're in a thirsty time as well. 
The reference here is really to a spiritual thirst, being refreshed not just in body, but being refreshed spiritually in our soul and our well-being. The times and situation that we're living under truly is leaving us rather dry and stretched and parched. So we have a wonderful invitation from God to come to him. It's actually much more than an invitation for when Isaiah writes, come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. It's like a vendor in a marketplace. He's hawking his goods. Water sold in a region or area where there is not enough water and water is very valuable. Well, we have the convenience of water bottles and and certainly tap water. Uh, So water is available to us, although it can be scarce. And there are times when we have that physical, dry thirstiness, and water does the best to refresh it. So what Isaiah is offering is an invitation from God, but it's an encouragement. It is one then that is emphasized when in that verse he says, and you have no money, come by and eat. Wow, just think of that, no money, which is offered to all, to all people. And then he emphasizes again, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. There's an urgency here. The time is now. People are thirsty now. People are walking and living without God now. There has been a drain on on all of us, including God's people. And the invitation is come to the waters. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Well, we have water that's very refreshing. But notice that when God offers something, it goes beyond that. Wine is enjoyment and and has a certain exhilaration about it. Milk is nourishment. And they obviously are more valuable and cost more than just water. This coming at no cost is significant. Is that it's offered to all people. Offered to all, not just the wealthy, because we want to be reminded that we all stand before God as sinners. We are all broken. We are all in need to confess our sins as we did earlier in our worship. And our only hope, without cost, is our Savior, Jesus, who covered the cost of providing us with what our souls need, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. In the very waters of baptism, we receive that forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Waters, again, washing over us and refreshing us. We want to emphasize that it's offered to all. People are ones that make distinctions between other people. Oftentimes, it's as much as about money or race as it is anything. I heard one commentator this week say, the economic impact of our pandemic has some people still in their private yachts, but so many people hanging on to the debris from a sunken boat or driftwood. Before God, there is no distinction. We come offering nothing. We have nothing to offer. Jesus himself makes the same invitation. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life, from John 4. Jesus also said in the Sermon on the Mount, one of the Beatitudes, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. What a wonderful gift is being offered to us out of God's compassion and freely given. Well, there is a sense, though, that in this marketplace illustration, when Isaiah talks about buy and eat, that there is a transaction that's being made, that there has to be payment for this. Someone has to pay for it. We rejoice that it was Jesus, our Savior, who paid the price by giving his precious blood. Earlier in Isaiah, we find the prior chapters about the suffering servant. We find that God's agent to bring us this gift of forgiveness, life, and salvation comes in Jesus, our Savior. 
salvation itself given to us. Purchased by divine grace given out of God's compassion and mercy. And how do we receive it? I often picture it's like the baby bird in a bird nest with open mouth or the open hand. And how do we receive it? By faith. Not by what we do, not by what we have, not by who we are, but by who God is and what he has done for us and what he gives us freely. Isaiah gives us a warning then in verse 2 of chapter uh, 55 of Isaiah. So this next uh, verse points out a danger for us as uh, we take a look at uh, the rest of the verses in this uh, particular chapter. Isaiah points out this, a danger of pursuing what is less valuable when he says, why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Well, here again, we have some marketplace transaction words. Why spend? The word spend actually is the word weigh. And as it weighs down, well, we're talking about weighing uh, money on scales, you know, marketplace. And your labor, another word for that would be toil on what does not satisfy. So we have this danger of pursuing what is less valuable. Jesus also understands this when he says, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. How important this is as Jesus, being tempted by Satan, understands when the challenge was there, when he was physically hungry to turn stones into bread, responds with the very word of God from Deuteronomy, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Truthfully, what Isaiah is offering us that refreshes us is the word of God. This comes to us in Jesus our Savior. It comes to us through his holy scriptures, and it comes to us in his sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. This pandemic time, shelter-in-place time, prayerfully has been also a time for all of us to reassess our priorities, understand what's really important to God and to us, including God himself, and family and other relationships, and even realizing what we can live without but knowing that God is still providing for all of those physical needs, but to pursue and seek what is most important first, those spiritual gifts that he gives to us. As we uh, go on into that verse 2, we find again a plea from Isaiah, listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the riches of fare. Give ear and come to me, listen, that you may live. Wow. Here again, it's really the vendor hawking saying, time's now, here's the chance. It's an offer that's not going to be here forever. And that riches of fare, uh, as um, uh, the word actually is fat. Uh, and um, uh, most peoples and throughout history, the richness of the fat, uh, what made something especially good. We're more conscious about things that are lean, but just think about it. The riches of fair, this, the best of everything God is offering to us. And what does it do that we may live? But live in a full way, not in a superficial way or an artificial way. And so there's this urgency that we receive that gift of God, that our hand of faith is open because God is ready to distribute his salvation. So spiritually we are fed when we're thirsty, by God's word and the sacraments. This provides us with revival, nourishment, refreshment. And then we find that all of this is tied in with Jesus, our Savior. And it is so much what we need right now. Ongoing in verse 3, uh, about the middle, it says, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promise to David. See, I've made him a witness to the people's a ruler and commander of the peoples. Well, David is really a type of Christ the Messiah. He's offering what is God's ideal, God's promises, and relying on 
what the people of Israel can remember. It's also what God offers to us in showing us Jesus our Savior, who willingly gave his life on the cross, that we would be restored. The restoration of the nation of Israel for Isaiah's listeners, the restoration of eternity for us in our world, and ultimately of Jesus and his church. But it's not something to keep, it's something to share. In verse 5 of our Old Testament reading today, we see that all of this is to provide water for a thirsty people. Every nation, every community, and we know that that thirst abounds. That there is things and empty places in people's lives, especially without Jesus the Savior. In verse 5, Isaiah writes, Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. This is all to God's glory, all of the gifts of God to give us freely forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. We are able to join him as we talk about joining Jesus on his mission to share that free gift of God's love, the free gift of God's life and salvation. It comes as we interact with people and accept people and respect people, as we love people, as we shower the love and compassion that God has given to us freely to others freely. Sometimes this comes very close at home as you think of someone that, that you would want to forgive or someone that you would like to be forgiven by. It's a gift of God. Think of the forgiveness and reconciliation needed in our, our culture and our societies and our community. Wow. And this can all happen because of this gift of God's love, compassion, and mercy in Jesus, our Savior. With the joy of joining him on his mission. We have an opportunity to pick up our Bibles as Isaiah says, listen, you know, tune in that you may have a full life. And in so doing, then live out a life that shares that love and compassion of Jesus. May God be with us as we understand the fullness of this free gift and freely live it and freely give it. In his name we pray, amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting, amen. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Heavenly Father, we thank you for refreshing us and filling us with your waters of forgiveness, life, and salvation. As we have been filled, so may we fill others. We come before you for healing and comfort, for Tim Zimmerman of the King's Brass, for a surgery operation on August 6th, for Tina Peterson, Jerome Redder's mother, who's having some challenging health issues, and for Dan Bunell, who is in hospice care. We bring before you others on our hearts and minds and entrust them into your hands. And ask that you would also provide for all those who work in the medical field as they care especially for patients that are suffering from the COVID-19 
We ask that you would protect all and bring health and healing. We ask a special blessing upon the ordination and installation of Kyle Weeks, nephew-in-law of George and Linda Lutz. We ask that you would bless his ministry at Light of the Hills Lutheran Church in Cameron Park, California, and that you would provide uh, for that congregation, be with Pastor Weeks and his family, and also an extra measure of your Holy Spirit as he begins his ministry. We pray for our missionary families, for JP and Amy Sima in Cambodia, Steve and Maggie Oliver in Taiwan, and our Kip family in Central Asia. We ask that you would grant them health, that you would watch over and protect them, and that the water that they are giving, this water that comes from you, will be refreshing to the souls of those they reach out to. We celebrate this week the birthdays of Joel Gooden, Diane Hills, Nikki Gooding, and Carly Hemminger. We ask your blessing upon them as you celebrate your, their, their gift of life from you, especially that spiritual gift of life. We offer a prayer of thanksgiving at the anniversary celebration of Pastor Matt and Mary Ann Sullivan. Watch over and bless this couple. Continue to be with them and encourage them in their marriage and provide for all of their needs as they thank you for your blessings. We entrust this nation into your hands and the peoples of our nation and the nations of the world and pray that your will would be done, that your gospel would be spread, and that all would work toward the common good of the people. We pray this all in the precious name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.